Another um, limiting and false belief around eyesight and vision is that the sun of the light is harming. Or actually, rather than a false belief, um, it's an incomplete uh, piece of information. And this is what video two was mostly about, how you can use the light of the sun, natural light, to improve your vision rather than uh, to deteriorate or rather than believing it um, is injuring you and yeah, being away from it and having worse results with your vision. Actually, the best quality of light that we can give our eyes is the light of the sun. But of course, we need to know very precisely when we can look at the sun or how we can enjoy sunlight. And we have to be very careful with this because indeed we could also be damaging our eyes. So we're going to review the elements of information around sunlight and we are going um, also to talk about uh, sunning, which is the second most important technique for me in natural vision improvement. So let's talk about uh, sunlight and sunning. Well, first, it's very important that you can distinguish the different kinds of light um, in the sun and what kinds of light you can use when for what kind of problem uh, in your vision. Um, as you know, well, it's actually the, the Earth going around the sun, but for practical explanations, uh, we will speak as if it is the sun that is moving around us, right? Um, so during the day, we see the sun in different heights regarding the horizon, yeah? Uh, the sun rises in the east, then it goes higher, especially in the summer, and then it goes, um, the sunset happens in the west. And if you have watched um, the kind of light that you can perceive with your naked eye at those different times of the day, you will have noticed that the quality of light, the, the tonality, the color of the light is different. This is something that photographers know very, very well. And good photographers or video makers, they are so aware of the different quality of the sun that sometimes, of the sunlight, sometimes they will have you wake at 5, 5 a.m. in the morning so that they can catch the first rays of light of the day, or they have you wait until it's 8 p.m. so that you get the special uh, sunlight of the sunset. So the kinds of colors um, that we watch are very different depending the moment of the day. And if we summarize it to make it just easy uh, to remember and understand, we could say that in the morning at dawn, uh, the light tends to be more yellowish. When um, at noon, like when the sun is highest in the, in the sky, the light tends to be more blue. And uh, in the sunset, at the end of the day, the sun the sunlight tends to be more orange and more red. Mm -hmm. These different kinds of lights are also a um, signaling system for our bodies. And our bodies have uh, different functions, different regulating functions, depending on the quality of light we perceive and the t uh, depending on the time of the day and the moment of the year. Uh -huh. And uh, it depends on the pineal gland that uh, segregates um, that segregates um, a substance called melatonin. Um, it also segregates, um, yeah. And this is something that helps us follow the circadian cycles. That is the cycles of light and darkness. And our bodies regulate with that so that we are active when there's light and that we go to sleep and we rest and we regenerate when it's uh, dark, yeah. When you take a plane and you travel to another part of the planet, uh -huh. you have something called jet lag and they advise you to take melatonin so that this circadian cycle can be regulated. And this is very important too, because when we have this um, circadian cycle well regulated with the production of our melatonin, then we rest, we regenerate all of our organism, all of our body uh, with all its functions uh, can have restoration and repairing and learning. Also, there's all kinds of physical, emotional and cognitive processes that happen at night that are extremely important. So it's very important that we can rest at night when there is darkness. And so it's very important that the light that we have in our environment follows this pattern of yellowish, bluish and orange, reddish. Uh -huh. 
As we spend more and more time in artificial settings with artificial lights, we don't get this anymore. Like the light bulbs at home, they tend to be with the same color all day long. And uh, the screens with our computers also tend to have the same kind of light all day long. And maybe you knew this or maybe you didn't, but these lights, these artificial lights tend to be blue. So they tend to be telling us all day long that it's the middle of the day. Uh -huh. So our system never goes to rest and to sleep when we are surrounded with artificial lights. So in terms of the light bulbs that you can buy at home, uh, nowadays, there are some light bulbs that can change the tonality of the color. They're a little bit more expensive, but frankly, in terms of the health that they're going to give you, they're really worth uh, the investment. And regarding uh, artificial lights, we have had, at least in Europe, maybe in other parts of the planet, I, I'm not equally aware of different parts of the planet uh, to these policies, but in Europe, incandescent and halogenous lights have been forbidden um, and instead, now you can only buy LED lights. And the reason behind this is a reason of energy. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's more ecologic because they, uh, they, um, they demand less energy, less electricity to function. Like they can produce a lot of light with little energy, so with little electricity, with little costs. Uh -huh. So it is a very good decision in terms of the ecology and the savings in the economy. But in terms of our health, it's not so good because LED lights, the standard LED lights, tend to be very blue. Whereas incandescent and halogenous lights that were much more energy consuming and much more expensive um, in, in the electricity bill, the, that kind of light has a more red kind of light and it has a larger spectrum. So for our eyesight, that is better. Mm -hmm for our health in general. So if, you have, if you're in a country where you can only buy LED lights at this moment, I would advise you to buy the kind of LED lights that you can have them change the color throughout the day. Yeah, and that's going to be better for the regulation of your circadian cycle. Okay, um, but now if we go again at the qualities and the properties of the different kinds of lights, mm -hmm, I cannot, so, I cannot say that any of these lights is intrinsically bad. Mm -hmm. They have just different functions. Um, the thing that is bad is to only have one kind of light throughout the whole day, like being exposed to blue light from the morning until the night. Yeah. But blue light also has uh, interesting proper properties for your eyesight, but not just any kind of blue light, the blue light from the sun. And what is that? Well, it has been discovered in many recent research articles that uh, children who spend more time playing in the sun, they develop less myopia. And it has been tracked that that effect is due to their exposition to blue sunlight. So if you want to decrease the probability of, the, of developing myopia or that your kids develop myopia or reducing myopia, spending time in the sun playing outside in the middle of the day is a very, very good idea. Yeah. Now, at this moment of the day, you shouldn't be looking directly at the sun with your eyes open. Uh -huh. If you direct your gaze at the sun in, at those moments, your eyes should be closed and you can do sunning. We will talk about sunning in a minute. I will review all the techniques that, are, uh, that go with sunning and the different variations. Um, but uh, not only blue light is interesting because it reduces the probability of getting myopia and it reduces myopia itself, but the red light, the yellowish light of uh, the dawn and the uh, orange and red light of the sunset are absolutely amazingly positive and extraordinary to take care of your retina. Uh -huh. um, we have been told, and there's research also around that, that sunlight can damage your retina. Uh, but the sunlight that damages the retina are the blue and the violet rays. But what has been found that, that less people know, because uh, when uh, we had the information that uh, blue and, um, and violet light could be uh, damaging for the retina, well, then people started wearing sunglasses all the time. And that's actually a very bad idea because they keep your eyes from nourishing from sunlight. Uh -huh. um, and the last, like the most um, groundbreaking and advanced uh, research that has been done 
around this issue is that actually when you look at the sunset and that you look at the reddish color of the sun, of the sunlight, that protects your retina, that repairs your retina. And then if you are exposed to blue and um, violet light, your retina is not damaged anymore. So watching the sunset is one of the best things that you could do to take care of your vision and to prevent uh, macular degeneration and to repair macular degeneration. So the red light of the sunset is absolutely amazing for your eyes. Now, I said just a minute ago that you shouldn't look at, your, uh, at the sun directly with your eyes naked. And that is true most of the time. You should never, ever, ever, ever watch um, sun eclipse because if you're watching the sun when there's an eclipse, there's a lot of uh, violet and ultraviolet uh, rays and they would literally burn your retina. So you should never ever do that. If you want to see a, a, a sun eclipse, watch it on TV, <laughs> watch it on YouTube, uh -huh. but do not look at it directly ever. Uh -huh. Not even with sunglasses, not even with um, uh, radiography uh, shots, never look at it because it's really dangerous. Now, in normal times, you should not look at the sun either with your naked eyes directly. And there is an exception to that, and that is precisely the moment when the sun is rising and when the sun is setting. And uh, in photography, there's a time that is measured, and you could get an app uh, to find exactly what the times are for each of those moments. I have one that's called Sun Surveyor, and that, that it gives, depending on where you are in the world, it gives you exactly what the precise times are for the sunset, from the sunrise, and what we called just a minute ago, the golden hour. So during the golden hour, it is possible to look at the sun because that's the moment when the rays, are, the, rays the light are more red, orange, and yellow. Uh -huh. But I will give you an even much safer uh, span so that you can look at the sun with your naked eyes at that moment. And that is the very moments, the, the, the 10 minutes where when the sun is raising, you can see that the sun is touching the horizon at the level of the sea. Uh -huh. During those moments, before the sun is separate from the sea, from the level of the sea, you can look directly at the sun uh -huh, with no protection and it will be repairing for your retina. And you will notice that it's even pleasant, it's pleasurable, it's very beautiful and you want to do it, you, you like to do it. Whereas if you try to look at the sun when the sun is higher, it's, it's bothering. So you, your natural spontaneous reaction is not to want to look at it. And the same is true for the sunset. When the sun starts to touch the horizon at the level of the sea, all the time while you can see the sun setting, yeah, when you see that the uh, circle is touching the sea and going down, during those minutes, and that's about 10 minutes max, you can look at the sun and you will see how beautiful, how pleasant it is to do so. And it's actually a moment where your eyes are being repaired, your retina is being repaired, and is being nourished and strengthened in a way that if later you are more exposed to blue light or violet light, etc., your retina is protected. So this, lots of people don't know about this, and it's absolutely a very natural resource. It's free. Uh, you don't have to pay yeah, anything for it. You can do it every day, and it's absolutely extraordinary for the quality of your eyesight and the quality of your vision and to take care of your eyes. Mm -hmm.